I hear Snoop Dogg say, man, look here, man, them streaming, you stream a billion and man, you ain't really making no money. What's your thoughts on streaming? They gotta be making money because right. they giving me money. It's some money in that shit. Some real money. In it. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another special edition of On the Road with Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. The guy that's stopping by for conversation and a drink today is one of the most influential and well-respected artists of his generation. He's loved by millions worldwide. Your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. He's a hip-hop A-lister, a Grammy Award winner, gold and multi-platinum songwriter, record producer, businessman, humanitarian, father, UK-born, ATL raised, a bona fide superstar, 21 Savage. How was that intro? You like that intro? Did I leave out anything? I, I mean, I, I got got less extra time. I can add some more. I ain't never heard no intro like that. I like that. Intro. I appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. that. You know, anytime you stop by conference, you have a have a conversation with a um, club Shasha. I got you a little drink. This this is me drink. right here, and uh, cause I want to toast the album, bro. Uh, that's you right there. American Dreams. Yeah. yeah. It's good, but I don't drink. You don't drink? At all. You just did that for me? I appreciate yeah, that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good looking. That for you. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and see code Shannon. New customers can bet just five bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code Shannon. The crown is yours. You was born in London. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you migrated, came to the U.S.? Like six turning seven. So do you remember a whole lot about being in London? I remember like small things, but not like a lot. Like a little small, like going to my grandma's house. Right. Like being with my mama. Uh, I remember like going to the stoves, like across the street. And then like on my mama, side of town it's like this shit called a high street okay and it's like a street just full of stoves i remember like walking over there but i remember more like from when we went back and visited okay type because we went back once to go visit when i was a little older so mm -hmm. i remember that more than i remember like stuff while i was there like when i was younger when you did you have very many friends? Do you remember friends when you were growing up? You say you left at six or seven. So did you have very many friends? I just had family, like cousins, mm -hmm. like a lot of cousins. Yeah, so I ain't really need no friends. <laughs> so your family, your, your mom moved you here. Of all the places in the U.S., why ATL, you think? I don't know. I ain't never asked her. You never, you never asked her like, Mom, not New York, not Chicago, not L.A., not Detroit, Atlanta. I ain't never asked her that. Oh, God. Do you think about how different your life might have been had you gone to one of those places, a Chicago or New York or Detroit or someplace other than the east side of Atlanta? Damn. Nah, I ain't never thought about that. Either. <laughs> oh God! You were just so you were just happy to like okay. So you get here, you get settled in. So obviously you're in a new London is very very. So is London? I'm assuming London is very different than Atlanta. It is, but it ain't though. Really? To me, because it's like it, it looked different. Okay. But it's the same shit. Okay. You see what I'm saying? It's like I like when I came over here, like. I have family too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you just around family. Oh, so your mom, so you you had relatives in Atlanta. Like my mama friends, they moved with us. So okay. all the people that I grew up with, oh, we okay. all moved. Okay. Like shit. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like you were just like moving to a by yourself, like just you and your yeah, mom. Nah. You had a, a a large contingent with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so did that make the transition a lot easier? I ain't know about no transition. <laughs> I'm just a child. I'm right. just with my mama. You right. know what I'm saying? So, right. so how how soon did you get acclimated and how soon did you make friends once you got to Atlanta? Um, like, quick. Like, it was this this boy named Skinny. Mm -hmm. 
he had got killed though, like a couple years ago. Wow. But that was like the first person I met that like ended up being like my best friend. Okay. Like growing up, they used to stay like, we stayed in the upstairs apartment. He stayed directly under us. Okay. And his mama like, we was bad as hell. Cause it was six of us. Well, right. back then it was like four of us. Okay. So we used to be jumping up and down, running around. And he was the youngest, but his siblings was like way older than him. Okay. And like, so they house was quiet. They got plastic on their couch, all that. So like when we used to make noise, his mama would grab a broom and hit the, hit the roof. <laughs> like that. So we ended up getting cool, huh? His mama and my mama ended up getting real cool. Okay. And I used to like stay at his house, used to stay at my house. Like I still talk to his mama all the time. Wow. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. your family, your background, y'all think of your really your mom was from the Dominicana, your father is uh from no, St. No, 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 Dominica. Dominica. Yeah. Oh, okay. It ain't not not Dominican Republic. Dominica. Yeah. And so how much of the tradition from when you came to from London did you guys bring with you? So where did you matriculate into East Atlanta rather 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 seamlessly? Like it's because you say you got a big you got six like four four boys and no it's three boys and three girls three girls three boys okay yeah. and your mom yeah and then my little sister them daddy he Jamaican okay and what you mean like like food wise yeah like, as far as yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah my mama cook okay for sure yeah so how soon did you start eating some of you know because they get they got the ox tail they got the smother pork chops mother chicken how soon were you started eating that opposed to what you were accustomed to eating i think like that came with like like making friends more okay than, like when i used to go spend the night at my friend's house like growing up i ain't never i wasn't allowed to eat pork okay okay you know what i'm saying right but, like other stuff like when i go to my friend's house Spend a night as a like when I was younger, mm -hmm. I eat whatever they cook. Right, but I ain't start really like just picking what I want to eat until right. I was a little older. You feel what I'm saying? So when you went back home, you like mom, my friends, they cook this. They, her mom, uh, their mom cooked this. You think you might be able to cook that? Did you tell your mom that? Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't telling my mom no shit like that. <laughs> hell no. Nah. She wasn't trying to hear that, huh? I know she wasn't trying to hear. Right. I ain't even to try it. Right. Did. <laughs> Did your mom share with you that you guys were leaving London, coming to the U.S., or did you just guys just up and leave? Did you know you were leaving? I don't really remember. Like, okay. I just remember. It's like so long ago. Right. So I'd be trying to really think about the story, but I'm I'm sure my mama told me where we was going for sure. Right. Because I was six. Right. But I just don't remember, like, that conversation. But I right. know it had to happen. Right. So do you remember, you just remember getting on a plane, didn't have no idea where you was going, you just know you were leaving London? Yeah. Right. Because I think at first it wasn't a stay thing. Oh, okay. She was just coming to visit? Right. Okay. I think we was coming to visit. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to fuck the story up neither, because right. my, my mama know the story. Right, you know okay. I think it was like, let's see. We want to move here, but we finna go see. If we don't like it, we're going to go back. Right. Type shit. Okay. And then we just stayed. Right. So yeah. clearly she liked it. Yeah. What about you? Did you like it? Or you were just going along with the flow? You really didn't have a choice in the matter because yeah. you're five or six years of right. age. So if you didn't like it, you were stuck anyway. You're going to just adapt. I liked it, though. Okay. okay. I liked it. Like, it's hot. It ain't cold all the time. Right. Like London. I remember, like, playing outside, like, doing the same shit that I used to do, like, when I used to go, like, to my grandma's house on my daddy's side. Mm -hmm. Like, we were playing the neighborhood, go like, it was the same shit. Right. So what was it like? I mean, because all of a sudden they got these these new, this new family comes in, and I'm pretty sure you probably had an accent. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They, so, that, yeah, okay, so now you're on the east side of Atlanta. Yeah. You got an accent. How how receptive were the kids to you? They used to teach. I got in a fight on the first day of school. I, oh, God. They, from the jump? Yeah, they, they was, used to tease me. Okay. Like, I went to Dunnell Elementary. That was the first elementary school I went to. Okay. So, we get to the, I get on the bus or whatever. They start talking to me. So, they making fun of me on the way to school. Okay. So, we get on the bus to go home. They making fun of me on the way home. Okay. So, we get off the bus. Like, one of the, one of the older dudes, like, his little brother was the main one. So, the older brother was like, 
like um said something like basically like shit fighting so we get off the bus i beat him up so the girls all the girls they run and tell my mama okay at the door so i your sisters no on oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, kids in the neighborhood kids girl. in the neighborhood okay so they run they tell my mama because they started i i really was kicking a lot they started calling me taekwondo kid <laughs> on my mama. it's a true story on my mom okay so so I they um they run to tell my mama. So I I'm trying to drag my feet to get home now. Right. So I walk to the door. She grabbed me by my ear, put me in the house because the girls were still there. Right. Telling her the story when I got there. So she I just remember her grabbing me by my ear and then like throwing me in the house like right. type shit. And then that was it. I ain't get in, in on punishment. You ain't get no punishment. Nah. She didn't ask you what started it. Uh uh. So you so I not from my memory. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. She probably did though. Right. But from what I can remember, I just remember getting pulled. You know, you only remember of course. the parts you remember. Like, right. I just remember the ear, like. So what do you think was the biggest obviously you're very young, so you haven't experienced a whole lot. It's not like you come in here, you're 13 or 14. So you haven't had a whole lot of uh uh you're five or six years of age. I think you're seven at this time. Yeah. So is there a big culture shock? Do you notice anything different about being in London as opposed to being in East Atlanta? The most shit that I like, that I used to like, what I remember changing mm -hmm. was the size of everything. Okay. Like I remember like in London, like our bathrooms would be like this big right here. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then I remember like we was still, we was in the hood in on the East side too. Right. But it was just like a size different. Like, mm -hmm. like at my grandma's house in London, I could touch both sides of her house like this. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But over here, it's like it's more space. Right. I remember that. And I remember getting in a car to go everywhere. Right. In London, we used to take the bus and the train like mm -hmm. everywhere. I remember like we always was in the car when we got here. So you had an accent, I'm assuming. Where, so where did you fall in the ranking as far as your siblings? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a suit. You. So you. Man. So if you're seven, that means you got three brothers and three sisters. That means, man, you got some babies. You got yeah, some. They some, was three. Like, cause it's a it's a three years age gap between me and my little sister. Okay. So if I was seven, she was probably like three turning four. Right. And then my little brother was still a baby baby. Right. And then the other three was born in America. Okay. Feel what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. So, did you see, feel a sense of responsibility because you are the oldest? You, you, I mean, even though you're a child, you're like, you're the oldest male. And so, do you feel some type of responsibility that you needed to like, okay, I need to be the man of the house even though I'm only seven years old at the time? I think so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I was naturally like a protector mm -hmm. type shit, yeah, for sure. So, what did your mom, what did your mom think about that? So, the type of relationship that, because, like you said, you're the oldest, your mom is in a new, in a new place, and granted, they're a, a, a community that came with you, but you the protector because you like, okay, I gotta look after my mom, I gotta look after my brother, my sister. Did, did your mom tell you anything about that, or you just instinctively took that on? I think it was just like instinct, for the most part. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like it's just in my personality too, like just like take care of everything. I don't right. know why I'm like that, but I think just naturally, like I developed that, cause like my whole life I've been like that. Like right. since I was old enough to like get out and do what I need to do, right? I always like took care of my mama and right. my siblings and shit. Right. Yeah. Do you feel that? So was your when you were in London? Do you remember much about your dad being around? Yeah, I remember my daddy used to come get me like every weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to be over there. Cause that's like where a majority of like my cousins was at. Right. On my on my mama's side, I only got like like three, four cousins. Okay. But on my daddy's side, it's like 30 of them. Right. So that's like like my oldest cousin, Taran, he in a wheelchair. Okay. I remember like following behind him a lot. Right. Feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's my daddy's side. Right. So, so you so in other words, you really love spending time with your dad's side of the family because that's where all the cousins were. That's where you got an opportunity to run and play and just have a good time. It was just deeper. Deeper. But my mama's side too, because right. like my cousins on my mama's side was bad as hell too. Oh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But it just wasn't a lot of us. Right. Like it was just me, Kyron, and Jerome. Right. We was the only boys on my mama's side. On my daddy's side, it was 
more. But well, it's if it's only three, shit, it's just different side. Well, see, if it's only three of y'all, the trouble is only going three yeah, places. Yeah, so it's you, you, or you. Oh, when the, your dad's side is about thirty of y'all, so you oh, can God. blame a whole bunch of people. Oh God. <laughs> So growing up in the east side on that side of town, rappers, Gucci Mane, Future, OJ the Juice Man, Rich Homie Quan, Childish Gambino. Did you did you know any of those guys when you were growing up? You had no idea about these. I seen Gucci before. Okay. Um, yeah, I seen Gucci before for sure. Right. I seen him at Church's Chicken before, like when I was real young. Right. Right. Yeah. No, Miss Winters. I seen him at Miss Winters. Miss Winters, okay. Yeah, yeah. Zone, I mean, the east side, that's zone six. There's a lot going on. Yeah. East side of Atlanta. There's drugs. There's a lot of killings. Did you, So what did your mom, did your mom try and shield you? Like, son, you can't be out this time of night. So what What did she tell you about the area that you that you guys like, were going to call home now? I don't, I used to be outside. So I don't remember, like, her just, like, the only time it'll be a problem is if I got in trouble in school. Right. But other than that, like, I wasn't like one of them when the street, like, come on, kids. Like, right. My mama used to let me figure it out because in London, it's the same shit. It's, it's, it's damn near worse. Right. Because it's like concrete everywhere. You right. see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. alleys. It's, it's the inner city. Mm -hmm. So in London, I used to be outside from what I, well, that was when we went back, though. Right. Like, from before then, I don't remember being outside okay. that much. But, so, like, nah, she just used to let me, like, Figure Let you my, figure it out. Figure it out. Then I used to be with Skinny. Okay. Well, his real name Aaron. Okay. I used to be with him, and he was older than me, so he was like my big brother. Right. And like, so as long as I was with him, she would give me a little more freedom to do shit. Right. Like, as long as he watching over you, you good. Did you always gravitate towards older guys? Yeah, I always hung with like people older than me for sure. Because you felt you were more mature than guy than than young guys your age. Yeah. For sure. Because I was older, I, I had to be, I'm the oldest. Right. So you naturally like a little more mature than mm -hmm. you have to be. Because if you're not, you're going to get in trouble. Right. So how was the struggle when your mom moving here, obviously in a different in a different country, obviously times were diff difficult for you guys. Did you realize how difficult times were for your mom and your family? Yeah, hell yeah. Like I remember when we first moved, um, you be smoking cigars on here, don't you? You go ahead and take off. All right. This is your, this your joint. Let's go ahead. <laughs> but I remember, like, um, when we first moved over here, like, before we moved to the neighborhood where I went to elementary school from, okay. we would move to another neighborhood on the east side. And I remember, like, my mama and her nigga, well, her man at right. that time, <laughs> okay. they used to sleep on the bottom bunk, okay. and all of us used to sleep on the top bunk. Okay. We used to share, like, we shared an apartment with, one of their friends, so okay. it was a two bedroom. Okay, I mean, we didn't got evicted before. I remember we were coming home, and our stuff was outside in front of the house. Right, like growing up, like um, I ain't never had my own bedroom till I was probably like fifteen years old or something. Mm -hmm. Like I, we all shared a room, like for probably from like first grade till like sixth grade. We sh I, it was they had a room. My mama and her man had a room, mm -hmm. and me and all my siblings had a, one room okay. in a two bedroom apartment. Then like I don't know what happened. They got a little motion, and then we moved in the same apartments. But we used to call it across the bridge. It's like the other side of the neighborhood. Right. And we had got a three bedroom. So okay. Then, okay. The boys had their own room, and the girls had their own room. And then I met my other big brother. When I moved over there to Vars, right, they stayed under us. They mama used to do the same thing. Oh man! <laughs> oh God, get the broom and bang the roof. Oh God! Right. Yeah, but for sure it was a struggle because like, she, my mama couldn't get no job or right. no, no driver's license. She couldn't get food stamps. She couldn't do none of that shit. Right. So you know it's a struggle. Right. So she's basically working any job that she can get. Maybe you know, maybe cleaning floors, maybe yeah. in the kitchen or doing things of that nature, trying to make ends meet yeah. to put food on the table and a roof over the head for the kids. The one job I remember her having, she I don't think she never like did like no cleaning floors type shit. But the one job I remember had her having was like a daycare, and they used to pay them under the table. Right. I remember hearing them conversations though, like being nosy. Mm -hmm. 
Cause I ain't even supposed to know that as a child, but I right. remember hearing them talk about it. Like, right. And she, um, she used to work at, all of them used to work at a daycare, her, her man. And then the other families that I told you mm-hmm. who moved with us, they used to work there too. And I, they used to pay them under the table like cash and shit. That's the only job that I remember though. Yeah. When you came home from school one day and you saw your family belongings outside, did the kid, how did that make you feel? Did the kids make fun of you? Did you realize what was going on when you saw all of your belongings on the outside? Yeah, because I didn't seen it happen before. And I remember, like, we used to steal people's shit. Like, because I didn't see other people evicted. Right. Seeing their stuff outside. And, like, all the kids, the badass kids, will be in the neighborhood walking around, see some shit, start going through that shit. Okay. So I just remember instantly thinking, like, nobody better not touch my shit. <laughs> That's, like, the first thought. And I remember standing out there. <laughs> But I remember, like, I didn't really care about it that much because they put our shit out, but they, we instantly moved to a bigger apartment. Right. So it kind of was like, it wasn't like we just, our shit was just out there and we were trying to figure it or, out. Right. Feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember us moving to a bigger apartment, like, instantly okay. type shit. So what was, what was a typical meal in the household? Oh, we had food. Y'all had good food? You not like steak and shit though. Like, Ramen, hot dogs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. Like we had the regular, you know, but right. not like I don't I don't remember no time like where it just wasn't nothing to eat in the house. Right. Like, it's gonna be some bread. Right. We used to make like condensed milk sandwiches, like then was like our struggle meal. Right. Like you take the you get the bread and the mm-hmm. condensed milk and mm-hmm. then you put it in like the little toaster type okay. shit and you put it together. That shit be good as fuck. Yeah. Oh god. You eat one of them now? Hell yeah, I will. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> oh God. But like, you know, hot dogs and noodles. My mama used to make noodle stir fry. Right. Like ramen noodles. Right. Um, curry chicken, jerk chicken, all that type of shit. Did you, you being the oldest, did you learn how to cook? Could you cook? For sure. Because I'm, I'm assuming like a lot of times your mom probably was working and you had to take care of your brothers and sisters. So it was left up to you to probably cook the ramen or warm the food up yeah. so they could eat when you got home from school. Not cook, though. Like the most my mama would make me do is like unthought of food. The meat. Okay. Like take the meat out. I used to get my ass whooped if I forget to take the meat out. Right. And put because she don't play about the lemon. Like don't just sit it in the water. Put lemon juice in the water when you sit it in the water. So sometimes I take the meat out and just sit it in the water without no lemon. Right. Get in trouble. Okay. But she ain't never just made me cook. But we used to make our own little food that we wanted. Right. Like, so if my little brother was hungry and they wanted like a pack of noodles, I'd make them some noodles or okay. some shit. Right. Yeah. Um, obviously we talked a lot about your mom. What what's the relationship like with your dad? Me and my dad in like a weird place because he got his side of how he look at it. I got my side of how I look okay. at it. Like like, I, I kind of understand, like, okay, if your child moved to another country, it, right. it, it's kind of hard type shit. But from a child point of view, all I can do is go off the emotion that I felt as a child. Like, I don't, I can't, I can't tell you how I would feel about it as an adult. Right. Because the, the hurt come from when I was a child. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like me, me whooping you as a child and then expecting you to receive the pain as an adult. Like, right. hell no, nah, I don't. I know how it felt when it happened. Right. I know I felt abandoned. That's how I felt. Right. I felt like I used to see like other kids in the neighborhood. Well, not in the neighborhood, but remember the family that I told you that moved with Yes. Us? I had a f- friend, well, he liked my cousin, basically. Right. Rakim. Mm-hmm. He was in the same predicament. Like he was in another country with, his mama was with another man now, a stepdaddy. And his daddy used to come visit him all the time, oh. buy him shit. Mm-hmm. So I used to be kind of jealous of, of, right. of what he had going on. Right. And so that's that's where a lot of the disappointment came from with my daddy. But my daddy was a good daddy to my siblings over there. All right. Like my little brother who died, mm-hmm. my little brother got killed. Right. On my daddy's side. Right. They was best friends. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I got twin little sisters and I got another little brother. They all love my daddy. You see what I'm so I can't just say you know bad daddy, right. but with me, I feel like you didn't do what you was supposed to do. The relationship that they have with him is not the relationship you have with him. Facts. Right. Because you saw, you said the family that moved with you, mm-hmm. you saw 
his mom, even though she was in a foreign country and she had ended up having another man, his dad still came over and would see him and buy him things. Yeah. And so, did you explain that to your father saying, look, uh, rock him, dad. He, his mom is with someone else and he found it time to come over here and see him and buy him things and spend time with him. Did you convey that to him? Not as a child. Not as a child. Okay. But like my little brother died in 2020. Okay. And like that was me and my daddy first time talking in like 15, 20 years type shit. Savage. I mean, you, you didn't, you didn't reach out. When like at like any at time? any point in time before that fifteen years was up, did you not reach out and try to have a conversation with your father? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Cause like when when I turned twenty one, I got shot. Okay. And my mama came in the, in the like while I was in the ICU, mm -hmm. she brought the phone. Well, I don't know if I was in the ICU. I don't know where I was at, but it was like fresh. It was right after I got to the hospital. Okay. And um, my best friend had just died like in the incident mm -hmm. so like i just remember being like mad i was more mad than sad so she tried to hand me the phone but i remember telling my daddy like um because my mama and her my like my sib four of my siblings got the same daddy i got my own daddy and then my little youngest sister got her own daddy okay so my mama was moved out here when she came out here the father of my four younger siblings, mm -hmm. he came like a little later okay. and we all was together. Okay. So when they had broke up, how I took it was like, I, you ain't my daddy. I got to figure my own life out. Like mm -hmm. I can't be up under your roof no more because my mama left. Right. So I left. So I remember communicating like to my daddy, like. Your biological father. Yeah. Like. Like, I'm in the street at this time, but I'm telling him, like, I figure it out. Like, I don't expect you to just be able to just put me up in an apartment and just pay my rent every month. Like, but I'm like, can you contribute like a hundred or two hundred dollars? And I'm gonna figure the rest out. I'm probably like 16, 17 at this time. This like years before I got shot. Okay. I remember communicating to him, like, can you help a little bit? Like, my mama ain't got you on child support. You don't really send no money like that. And it ain't no disrespect, like, cause I, he went in, like, he be taking shit like me telling my story is like trying to down him. Mm -hmm. But this is my truth. This okay. is what I remember. You okay. feel what I'm saying? Right. Like from what I remember, he wasn't really sending no money to my mama. Okay. And my mama wasn't just pressing him for no money cause she had a man. Right. So you see what I'm saying? So I remember communicating that and I remember like it not coming through. So now I gotta go extra harder in the lane that I'm in. Right as a 16, 17 year old, you feel what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. I gotta fend for myself down there. I gotta feed myself. Like I'm staying with friend, a friend, a friend, you feel what I'm saying? Right. So I remember feeling let down by that. On top of all the other times that I was let down when I was young and I wanted shoes or a phone or this or that, a new video game, you feel what I'm saying? So at a certain point, I remember like, I got old enough to where it was like, I own, I don't even care to talk. So that's how that build up came of me not talking right. to him about them mm -hmm. years. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So in 2020, your brother gets, lose his life, right? Yeah. At that point in time, did you think about putting everything else aside and try to reestablish a relationship with the father? I did. And we got on the phone and he started doing some things that rubbed me the wrong way. Like, like just asking me for shit, like too early and like. So at this point in time, you had already become what you become. Yeah. In 2020, I'm 21 Savage. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But I kind of like fell back and then like, you know, like when I do interviews, these questions come up and I just, I'm truthful. So right. I think that might have rubbed him the wrong way. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Type shit. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you went back, you, your parents come, you come over here and you go back. So how long were you over here before you went back for a month, two months, three months? We came out here, I was seven, six. I was six, turning seven. 
we went back the summer of sixth grade going into seventh grade. So however old you is. Okay. So probably 11, 12. Yeah. So probably like what? Five years. Mm -hmm. We was over here five right. years. Cause I know, I know whatever it was, it was right before the visa expired. Mm -hmm. We went back and then renewed it. Okay. Type shit. You go over there with it. Did you remember anything about London? Because you had now you had spent just as much time in America as you had London. Because remember, you're five or six when you left. Yeah. You stay five, six, seven years here, yeah. and you go back. Did did it seem like home, mm -hmm. or did it seem unfamiliar to you? It seemed like home. Like even like like even when I just went back for the first time in what. I don't know how many years that is. If I the last time I went was when I when I was twelve, and I just went last year when okay. I was thirty. That's what eighteen years. Yes, I still remember how to get to my grandma's house. Okay, like cause like it's a parking lot and you got to walk through to get to her house. Mm -hmm. Like I I still remember how to walk to her house. I mm -hmm. still remember how to walk to the stove. Right. So it's like I remember. I don't remember everything, but I remember like right key like major parts mm -hmm. type shit. Once you get once you get over there. Did you yearn to come back like, yeah, I like London, but the U.S. is my home now? When I was young, when yeah. we went back to visit? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was ready to go home. Not like just in a rush, but right. it was like, all right, now I miss my other friends. Right. Like, I missed y'all. We didn't kick it. Now right. I miss home. Ready to go back. Yeah. So school, how were you in school? What type of student were you in school? I was an excellent student mm -hmm. up until a certain grade. Okay. Like, I feel like. Like, um, we was just talking about this last night. We was playing the game, and they was like, um, spell supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> and it was crazy because I won the spelling bee in fifth grade spelling that same word. Wow. And I won the math competition that same year. Like, okay. So I used to get all A's, but, like, up until a certain point, I feel like when I, when I found out, like, really just realized, like, I. Right, no matter how good I do in school, I can't go to college because I'm an immigrant. I can't get a job. I can't get no driver's license. I feel like once that started to kick in, I kind of just gave up like, okay. and just stopped caring. I used to go to school, fall asleep in class, like just do all types of shit. Right. So once you realize, like, man, as smart as I am, math, was, won the math competition, won the spelling bee. I can only advance so far in school. Now, I might need to try a different path. Yeah. So you go on this. So in school, so how so how were the other kids towards you? Because you're smart. Normally kids, they pick on kids that are smart. But I was the cool kid. Oh, you were the cool, smart kid. Yeah. Okay. Cause I used to do bad stuff too. <laughs> I just had I just had good grades. <laughs> but I still used to skip, fight. Right. Like do all the little mischievous things kids right. do in school, but I I was just smart. I'm right. still smart. Like, did you get bullied in school? No, nah, I ain't really get bullied. I had issues with people. Right. Not just like you ain't finna just put my head in the toilet or take my lunch money. No, no right. So that's what it was. I mean, the older kids trying to take advantage of you. Yeah. And you like nobody never tried to do that to right. me. I'm just saying like I'm not one of them kids. I was never one of them kids. Right. You ain't letting nothing slide. Nah, my mama ain't even finna go for that. Right. Like, I remember, like, getting tried in the neighborhood. Right. My mom and them coming outside to fight with us. What? Where your mom at? Facts. Mom put it down like that? I remember one time, like, it was this lady. And my little sister used to be real cool with this lady daughter. Right. But I was just known as the bad kid in the neighborhood. Right. So somebody spray, it, spray painted fuck you all over her car. She had, a, like, a Lexus. The little, oh, man. The little bubble Lexus. Right. But it was like, a, it wasn't like the... So it was just like a regular little Lexus. Okay. So she comes straight to my door. My mama ain't home though. Banging on the door. Where your bad ass at? Ooh, ooh. I know you did this shit. Ooh. So she come to the door. So my auntie was down the street. I guess my little sister ran and told my auntie. So my auntie come down. My auntie come down. By this time, they didn't call my mama. I remember my mama just smashing through the neighborhood in her minivan. I remember I had some scissors. I had them broke the scissors, so it was just one side of the scissor like right. this. So my mama pull up, swerve, and she parked right in front of the lady building. So the lady out there, um, the lady standing like on the car, like with her back on the car. My mama jump out the truck, bitch! Woo! She done mushed the lady. 
What? So, oh God. But the lady didn't want to fight. So my mama didn't really just mash the gas on the type shit. Oh God. And me and my little brothers, you know, we deep. It's all of us. Then we got friends. Right. Like, and our friends damn near like our family. Like we like a it's the hood. Like, right. We damn near like this our side. Right. Like. So they all out there like ready. Like they was gonna beat her up. But she 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 bit her tongue. And on my mama, I really didn't do the shit. Right. It really wasn't me who spray painted her car. Right. That's how you know reputation is. Your reputation preceded you. Oh God. Because you used to get in stuff and they just automatically assume some if some oh ish went down, Savage did it. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. And I was innocent as a motherfucker. So you go to school, you end up getting kicked out of school because you bought a firearm to school. Yeah. What made you feel you need what made you feel like you needed to bring that fire on? I think I was just bad. Like we were, it was like some issues where a group of people from like another neighborhood mm -hmm. that we didn't really get along with was saying like they was supposed to be trying to fight us mm -hmm. and they was a deep, it wasn't number like five, six of us because right. all my friends are older, so they in high school. Like, right. You see what I'm saying? Right, okay. Like the people that I hang with, that's like, I feel like is like me, it's only a few. It was like three of us. And then like, I was just being bad, really. I didn't really need to bring no gun. Right. Where you get where you get the strap from? Like this dude in my neighborhood had did something and he hid it somewhere, and I knew where he hid it at. So, you <laughs> so I slick stole it. Right. Yeah. And so, someone tell how did they find out that you had the piece on you in school? Because when I got to school, it was an ISS day. So I started thinking like, nah, I don't, I don't want to just be. Had this motherfucker on In school me. suspension. Yeah. I ain't want to just have it on me all day. Like. Right. So I'm like, let me hide it. And it was this little bitch ass little, like he ain't even really, I don't even really fuck with him. He just happened to be there while I'm hiding this shit. Oh man. Like, I ain't even thinking about this shit at the time. I didn't put this shit up under some leaves and some bushes and shit. So I guess they see us on the camera, but on the camera, they can't really tell who doing what. They right. can see me and him right there right. doing something. I don't know how it happened though, but they found it. They end up finding it. So they come get me out of ISS with the, it was the school officer. His name was Valentino or Valencia or some shit. Mm -hmm. But he was a police officer, but school police. Okay. They come get me out of ISS. They walk me into the um, assistant principal office. But they know me like all the, cause you know, like, and kids, this ain't for me. I'm not bragging about this, but. When you bad as hell in school, right. you, you you have a, a assigned counselor mm -hmm. type shit. And normally your counselor is one of the assistant principals right. type shit. So all, I didn't have been counseled by all of them type shit. So they come get me out of ISS. They bring me in the, um, in the office. The nigga who was there while I was hiding the shit, he right there in the office. I'm like, oh shit. He, he done dived you out. I know what this about. So they bring me in the office. They're like, yeah, what what was in the I'm like, I don't know. What y'all talking about? I don't know. Nothing. I don't know. I wasn't doing shit. So I just sit there. Then I just, every time I used to get in trouble, I just get an attitude and get mad. And so I don't got to answer the shit. Okay. I just be like, man, bro, <laughs> just stop talking. So I stopped talking. So they, they like, all right, come on. They bring me back to ISS. So I'm like, oh, I'm straight. So I'm seeing that ISS, they start calling like, you know, they be like buses, walkers, riders, ooh, ooh. So everybody start going. So I get up off the rip, like I am I ride the bus. Right. But they let, I think either walkers or riders out first. Right. I get up as soon as the first one, get up. So I'm walking out of ISS, I'm walking out, of, you know, ISS in the trailers. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down the hill. I see the school police, he walking towards me, he come get me, he cuff me. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. But all I was worried about was my mama. It's like when you young and you get in trouble, you don't give a damn about nothing else but what your mama was gonna say. say. Oh God, they cuffed me up, took me to, um, they tried to do some fake scared scrape shit. They took me to um, the big jail, the Cal County. Right. Um, but like, they used to like, I don't know how they do it now, but back in the day, they used to book you in the big jail. Mm -hmm. Not like put you in the big jail, but that like the juvenile facility was right there, but they'll take your pictures and mm -hmm. shit at the big jail. Right. So when they bring us in, I guess they told one of the inmates, like, start banging on the, the window or some shit to scare right. us. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, yeah. <coughs> that didn't work. No. 
Now, it's a big ass dough. What, right. what you gonna bust through the dough and do something to me? <laughs> <laughs> so now they ban you. You cannot go to school in DeKalb County, correct? No, that ain't that. That I got on probation for that. You got on probation for that one, okay? Right. The next year, no, this yeah, this this eighth grade. I'm doing good. I'm still on probation, mm -hmm. playing football right. or whatever. So I, I'm at the back of the bus with, with all the cool kids. Okay. We on the way to school. These niggas, it was this song when we was young called T-Bag the Ho. Man, these niggas in the back, they start beating on the, the window. T-Bag the Ho. T-Bag the Ho. <laughs> Banging on the window. So people start throwing shit because we had a substitute bus driver. Oh, man. Yes. They start throwing paper at the bus driver. I'm just back there. I ain't really doing shit because right. I'm on probation. So right. I'm chilling, but I'm laughing and shit. Right. I think I was singing the song a little bit. Right. Man, they come get us. They treat us like we got down did some, some serious shit. They come get everybody. Everybody who was in the back of the bus, they put us in the library. They had a like the, it was some girls who was like telling about mm -hmm. what happened. They got down. I think some of the boys was like grabbing the girls type shit. Right. Bringing the girls back down and shit. Girls was sitting on people's laps mm -hmm. and just bad shit. Right. So they had some girls who started telling. Right. Like they got in trouble. Like if you don't tell who was doing it, we're going to tell your parents that you've been being fast back there. Right. So got down. I just remember they had, we had like a, um, they used to call that shit like a hearing. A mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah. In the library. They bringing all of us to the window. They got girls lined up. We got to put our face at the window like the hell. They like, <laughs> yup, they said him. They put my face. I ain't even did shit. They like, yup, him. <laughs> so when that happened, by me being on probation, probation. already, that's when they kicked me out of the school. So right. Like shit, for that incident. So they lied on you. Hell yeah, they lied on me, man. You sure? I mean, you sure you had no, but you I had no involvement. Never, I should have never been back there. Once they started doing all that extra you should have got went to the I front. Got up and went to the front. Right. So they didn't really lie. I was back there. Right. I just wasn't doing all the, the shit that they was doing. Right. Like I was in the mix type shit. Did you have to go to juvenile detention for that? Mm mm. That was just like some school shit. Cause so, they like nigga, you on probation. Right. You still don't know how right. to act. So shit. they inform your mom. That's when they kick you out of the Cal County, yeah. correct? Yeah. So they tell your mom. Yeah. What'd your mom say? I, I I think that's the first time I really just got grounded. Like, well, you can't even leave the house. But I still was leaving the house. <laughs> and, uh, my mama know that shit, though. She know that shit. Because, yeah, I got grounded. Because, matter of fact, on God. So, boom. My mama, she ain't whooped me. By then, I'm too grown. Like, right. Ain't no whooping. So, she, I get home and shit. She like, you ain't leaving. You can't go nowhere. Sit inside the house. Watch your little brothers and sisters type shit. Because at this time, my little brother, Ruru, he was probably like two or some shit. Mm -hmm. So I used to have to babysit. But my little sister, old enough to watch him too. Right. So it was this little boy in the neighborhood. I ain't going to say it. I don't even remember his name anyway. But he was like younger than me. So I'm outside. We at the park. The park like right behind our building. So we, at, I'm at the park and shit. He walk up like, bro, I got some keys. I found some keys to this lady car that live in the next building. So I grab the keys. I take the keys. I'm like, what car is it? He show me the car. I'm like, all right, all right. So I don't supposed to be outside. No. So goddamn, I go get the car. I crank it up. I'm like, oh shit. He's Have you ever driven a car before? Yeah, my oh, mama, my okay. mama, my mama shit. The minivan. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so I'm like, oh shit, it's the real key. So I jump out, I jump out, I, I, I walk out, I walk back to the park. So you know how when you're young, you doing something bad, you always need somebody with you to yeah. do it too. Like you ain't gonna just do it by yourself. Right. So I forgot who it was. It was somebody. Oh, it was it was my partner. I forget his name. Terry. He used to live across the bridge though. He was spoiled though. He was the only child. They, right. they lived in the townhouse. Okay. So I used to kind of like be jealous of him, but I used to, I used to fuck with him too. He used right. to have all the games, right? Unlimited snacks. <laughs> oh god! So I went and got tear. <coughs> I got a car. I got a hot box. That's what we call like a stolen car. Right. Like, I got a box. I got a box. So I go get him. We go get in the car. So we driving around the neighborhood, spinning like, 
swerving, oh, yeah. like doing burn, not burning right. out, but just like drifting. Right. So I go park the car, we jump out, we go back to the park again, we chilling. Probably like 30 minutes go past, I'm like, shit, let's go ride, let's go ride. So goddamn, now I feel like I done mastered the car. So now I'm trying to do extra shit. So I get in the car, I reverse it, but we, the car is parked directly in front of the people, like building, they right. apartment building. Right. So when we pulling off, we like trying to ease off and then hurry up and smash off. So I put the car in reverse and I back out the parking spot. So, but he working the, the gear. Right. I'm just hoping. You just driving, okay. Wheel. Yeah. So I'm thinking this nigga put the car in drive. This nigga still, still got in reverse. I done smashed on the gas. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Hit a tree. <laughs> Man, I'm like, oh shit. Shit, shit. I hurry up and park the car. Get out the car. We take off running in the back because I ain't want to run this way because my building right here. Right. So we run behind they building and I run through the back way of my building and go change my clothes type shit. So I come back out the cab County police out there. So I walk up. So they're like, uh, who seen where they went? Who seen where they went? Woo -woo. I'm like, I seen them. They had on white. They ran that way. They ran that way. <laughs> My bitch ass little cousin and told his mama it was me. Oh man. So the police don't know, but my mama know. Right. So now goddamn. They he done told, but I think I I can't remember. I, I gotta call my mama and ask her, like, did she whoop me about that? Cause I think she that's like she punched me about that, like, ooh, or something. I remember I got in big trouble for that. And right. I just remember that being like a couple of days after the school bus incident. Mm -hmm. Cause that was like fresh, like I really wasn't supposed yeah, to be outside. Right, you supposed to be inside. Yeah. You not only are you outside, you doing some some. Oh no, that's how I got to go outside. On oh, God, I told my mama I was taking my little brother to the park. Okay. So my little brother was at the park with my little sister. Right. That's how I got outside. Oh, uh, okay. On oh, God. So you were supposed to be outside. You just wasn't supposed to be no no hood shit. Oh God. Oh excuse me. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> and your brother Raddy dived you out. My little cousin. Little cousin did. Yeah. He told his mama that it was me. And my his mama told my mama type shit. But did the police ever find out it was you? No. Well, you straight there. Statue yeah. of limitations up. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> sports. Did you play sports? I played football. But I was too small. But I tried. You tried. But really, I had to for probation. Okay. Like, they was like, you got to be in as many extracurricular activities as possible to keep you from doing shit. Just being at home, doing nothing. Right. So I had to. But then, like, at the, I only played one season because at the end of the season, my mama them didn't have enough money to pay the dues. Right. So I only played one season. I probably got on the field three times. What position did you play? Wide receiver and cornerback. Okay. Um, had you stuck with it, you think you'd have been pretty good? Yeah, because I ended up getting taller like okay. as I got older. Right. So probably, yeah, for sure. But I stopped going to school in ninth grade. Oh, you might have been an NFL player. Facts. But I don't think the average, do the, how much money do the average NFL player make? Do they make more than a rapper? <coughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It all depends, man. I, mean, I think I went the right route. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I mean, unless you would play quarterback. Now, quarterback, they make some bread. Yeah. They make 40, 50 mil a year. Yeah. But you're doing better than that, too, so you did the right thing. Yeah, facts. Yeah, you ain't take, you don't got to take no hits. <laughs> yeah, nah. Right. <laughs> Y'all be bruised up. Yeah. Ain't no nigga finna be pushing me to the ground yeah. and all that. So, you go, so the ninth grade, was that, well, that's the farthest you went in school, right? Yeah. You dropped out. So I got kicked out you, eighth grade. Oh, you got kicked out of eighth grade? For the second semester of eighth grade. What'd you do to get kicked out? The bus shit. Oh, so yeah, but you had, but I thought you could go, if you went to another county outside of DeKalb, you were straight. I still, that's what we thought. So we moved up the street to Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to alternative school. Right. In Gwinnett County. Right. And they make you well, like, that shit was just different, bro. Like, because when I went to alternative school in the Carrot County, you know, it's black kids. It's still like, it's still like regular. Right. I got out there, it was just nothing but Mexicans. But it was some black people too. But right. this one I first learned about gangs and right. shit. Okay. Type shit. So I went there for a semester. Then I went to South Gwinnett High School for mm -hmm. like, probably like 
a semester. Okay. Then they was trying to kick me out because I was smelling like weed in school, mm -hmm. falling asleep in class. But this is about around the time where I'm telling you, like, I ain't, I ain't really feel like mm -hmm. shit was going to get me nowhere because right. I'm an immigrant. Right. So I just stopped caring. Right. So my mama just withdrew me type shit. And she started, like, trying to homeschool me and shit. And then that shit, I don't know. It's just eventually I just, I don't know what the hell happened. But it just stopped. You just kind of realized, like, man, school ain't for me. Yeah, oh, God. Right. Yeah. And so what, so once you realize, like, school ain't for me, what do you, so, like, what are you going to do? You got to do something. Shit, hustle. <laughs> <laughs> shit, that's all you, that's all I could do for real. Did you ever get your D, GED? No, nah, I'm finna get it, though. So when you, when you, okay, your mom takes you out of school. Do I got my G? No, I don't think I do. No. Your mom takes you out of school. She's going to try to homeschool you. You're like, F it. This ain't for me. What do you tell your mom? Mom, school ain't for me. Hey, I'm not going. This homeschooling ain't working. I'm going to get on this grind. Or did you, or did you just like, I just got to do what I got to do? Honestly, my mama always just knew, like, because I used to be getting in trouble for, like, having cars lined up outside the house and shit. So, like. Cars lined up outside the house? Yeah, type shit. You a general manager of a car dealership or something? Yeah. That's, the, that's the only way that's supposed to happen? Like, people outside waiting in the car and shit. Okay, yeah. So, she, I feel like she had an idea. But I think I was just too grown. Even though I was young, I was just, like, grown. Like, I can't explain it. It was, like. You, you, you was can't much older than your age. Yeah, like you can't tell me nothing because I already be gone for goddamn two, three weeks at a time type shit. So it's like if you tell me something, I'm going to just get the hell on. Right. And go do it somewhere else. So when did the affiliation with the gangs, when did that come about? Like, I don't know. I feel like when you're from the hood, they just automatically like affiliate you with a gang. Right. Just growing up in the area. Did you feel so you I need? I ain't never been initiated into no gang right. and no shit. Yeah. So that's 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 you're not a part of a gang. If no. people just assume, yeah, because you was doing devious, you know, stuff, right? right. The stealing the cars and, and whatever else was going on, they just automatically assume you were a part of a gang, right? Just from being from a certain side of town and shit. Right. Yeah. So. Did they say anything? Did your mom them say anything to you? Like, bro, bro what you gonna do with your life? I think, I think my mama used to like beg my daddy to like step up type shit. More than like to me. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I feel like she felt, she probably felt like shit. What else can he do for real? Right. Type shit. And it wasn't like I was just stupid. Like, I kind of knew what I was doing mm -hmm. type shit. So I think she more used to, like, say that shit to my daddy. Like, come, like, get him or come be with him. or. But then again, it's like she probably was saying that. But I wouldn't have went, went for that, though. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Even if he, had come, if he had come to the States and tried to take you back, were you going to go? Younger, yeah, I probably would have, like 16, 17. Right. But by the time I was 20. But you grown ass I, man now, I mean, he can't get you to go nowhere. Right. I had my son, though. Right. So it wasn't, that wasn't the option no more. Right. Type shit. Mm -hmm. I had my son the same year I got shot. So that was 2013. I right. Was 20. So you was 20? Yeah. Take us back to that date. Do you remember anything about that day? About the, the day you got shot and your friend got killed, do you remember anything about that day? Was it a normal day? Did you wake up like, oh, this is this is a Tuesday, this is a Wednesday, I'm going to start my day, I'm going to carry on. What was it about that day? Did anything feel different? Yeah, it kind of, some, it ain't really feel different, but when I look, you know how you, in the moment, you, you don't, it don't feel different. Right. But you look back on it and it's like, damn, because that day was my birthday. Okay. So... Like he was, was turning twenty one, correct? Yeah. Okay. It was my birthday, his his mama's birthday, and his nephew birthday. Okay. So Y'all got the same birthday, so I was trying to like book a hotel room so we could have like a kickback and shit. Okay. Like for that weekend, mm -hmm. and um, he called me because I had like a couple cars and shit, 
Like, but they were my not stolen cars, like cars I paid for. Okay. And in one of my cars, I had speakers in the trunk. Like, you know how people put speakers in yeah. the trunk. And one of his speakers went out in one of his cars. So he needed one of mine and he was like, shit, I'm gonna just give you one of mine when I when I whenever I go buy a new one, I don't feel like going up there now. So and he was like, I wanna see Kamari too, my son. Right. So I wasn't at the house. I was with my other partner. He ended up getting killed too. His name, one one. I was with him. He was like riding with me and shit. We was trying to get the he was gonna get the hotel room in his name because I ain't got no ID, I ain't got no license. Mm -hmm. So I needed somebody to get the room in their name. So I was riding with him and shit. And Johnny is my friend who was with me that got killed. Okay. He had went to my mama house because me and my mama, me and my mama last baby daddy, like my little sister mm -hmm. daddy, um, we had all went in like we was paying rent on the house. Okay. They was paying more than me, but I was paying, I was probably paying like 500. They was probably paying like 600 okay. or some shit. And um, so we was all staying together. So he had, um, cause remember I told you like my mama and her other baby daddy mm -hmm. broke up and right. shit. And she ain't had nowhere to go type shit. Right. So we finally back together mm -hmm. in the house. So Johnny had went to my mama house and he had went to see my mama when they see my son and he had got to speak out the car and shit. Okay. But I remember like that whole day, now that you said, like, I remember that whole day I kept telling myself, like, I gotta pull up on Johnny, I gotta pull up on Johnny type shit. Cause he wanted something that I had and I wanted something that he had. Right. So, um, after he seen my son and shit, and that was his first time just going to see my son on his own. Like mm -hmm. he ain't never did that before right. type shit. So after he went to go see my little boy and shit, I had pulled up at his house and he was like, um, he was like, ride with me somewhere right quick. I got to handle some shit. He was like, I don't feel like going in my car though. Let's, let's just ride in your car. Okay. Cause I was in one of my little pluck plucks, like, like a hoopy right. type shit, like a low key car. Mm -hmm. So goddamn, the shit so crazy because like when we was in the car on the way to wherever he was trying to go to, his grandma called and his grandma was on the exact same street, but where we was going was to the left and where his grandma was at was to the right, okay. but on the same street. Okay. And she called like right before we turned on the street, like we was at the light waiting to go left mm -hmm. type shit. So when I used to think back on it, I used to be like, damn, like, you know how they be like in life, you, you got a choice, like which go way left. you can go type shit. Mm -hmm. And I used to be like, damn, if he would have went right, he would have still been alive type right. shit. So we make we made we ended up making a left or whatever. We ended up pulling up or whatever. And like a nigga just jumped in the back seat and just was like geared up type shit. Then a whole bunch of just shit started happening. Boom, 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 boom. Do you think with the setup? Cause I mean you say this is a, this is a bucket. This is the car that, you know, low key, don't nobody really know. Did did people know you had this car? Mm-mm. Not people who knew me, because I was always like a super low key. Right. Like, like I got a flat, I had a flashy car too. Right. But nah, didn't nobody know about this car for real. I be thinking back on like a lot of shit. Cause even like after that shit, I used to be like, damn, I didn't did like a lot of shit to a lot of people type shit. Mm -hmm. So I used to be like, this shit could have came from anywhere type right. shit. So that day right. used to cross my mind. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know. Did you feel you let your guard down to allow somebody to get to jump on you like that? Not really, not really. Cause I was on point. I think that's how I made it type shit. Like I was already looking back type shit. Did you know the guy? Mm -mm. I ain't know. So he says, give it up. Whatever you had on you, like, okay, bro, hey, whatever I got here, take. Mm -mm. You didn't have it. You, you said, I ain't got nothing, bro. I had some. But you told him you, you told him you didn't have anything. No, I had something else for him. Oh, you had, yeah. Not what he wanted. You're right, <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Type shit. But he had something for me too. Right. <laughs> shit. So he got to jump on you? Kinda. Not really though, because they was really scared for real. Like, it was one or two? 
It was two of them. It was two of them, okay. One of them jumped in the back seat. Okay. One of them was standing up outside the car. Okay. Type shit. So the one who was standing outside the car, he shot me off the rip right here. Okay. Because I'm turned like this. So he like, fuck, nigga. Boom. Type shit. Okay. Then he take off running. So now it's just me and Buddy in the back seat. Okay. But my brother, he, um, like, I remember screaming to him type shit because me and Buddy started going back and forth. Like, his arm was, like, over the seat and my arm was, like, over the seat. Okay. So I remember, like, but I was shot. So I remember saying, like, like, Johnny, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him mm -hmm. type shit. And me and Buddy was just going back and forth. And then he started, Buddy in the back seat started screaming, like, ah, ah. So you hit him? Yeah. But I was hit up too. Right. So when I remember like the gun jammed type shit. So I had cocked it back again. And when I put my arm over the seat, he put his gun on my arm and shot me. So my gun fell out my hand. Mm -hmm. And I remember us fighting over my gun. Then it went off one more time. Boom. And I got shot right here in my hand from holding the gun type mm -hmm. shit. Then he got up and he tried to run and he collapsed type shit. And then I remember um, that's when I, I had an iPhone then. This was probably like the iPhone 3 or some shit. <laughs> Ugly ass iPhone. <laughs> so goddamn, I remember like trying to unlock the phone to call 911. And like my blood kept drying up the screen right. type shit. So I remember I got out the car. But first, that's how I, I knew Johnny was dead type shit. Because like after Buddy got out the car and ran, I remember I told Johnny, like, pull off, bro, pull off, pull off. And then the car wasn't moving, but his his foot was on the gas, right. but it was in park. Right. So the engine was just like, revved mm -hmm. up. Then it, it was like some movie shit. The windshield wipers was like, shh, shh, but it wasn't raining. Right. And then, you know, the door, like when you got the door open, ding, 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 like mm -hmm. the, the alarm to tell you close the door right. type shit. So I jumped out the car. I went and knocked on somebody's door. They ain't come to the door. So I went back to the car and got down. I unlocked my phone. I, I finally, like, I didn't even unlock it. Back then, it was like slide for emergency call. Right. So I ended up sliding it. Call 911, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm shot. Woo, woo, woo. They get to the asking all tight, just dick out ass questions, like, <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Like, I'm shot. What, shit. what street? Man, what the fuck you mean, what street? Who, who, I don't know the street. I'm just shot. Right. Type shit. So they like, um, I remember telling them like, my, my brother dead, my brother dead type shit. And then I remember laying there and I guess the nigga who was driving them niggas, he came looking for the nigga who was in the back seat. I guess he couldn't find the nigga. So goddamn. They, um, he rolled back past and I remember being on the phone because I thought they was finna ride back past to handle the business. Right. So I scooped back type shit. I was on the phone. They like, like they run back past ooh, type shit. Then I remember the police pulled up. Um, I don't even think I told her. I think I just put the phone like down type mm -hmm. shit and just did like that. Then the police pull up. So I get out the car because I'm a victim. I'm like, man. This nigga talking about, put your hands up. He, put your hands up. Let me see your hands. I'm like, bro, I can only put, I can only put this arm up. Because remember I told you he shot me shot in this me arm. So I put the arm up. I'm like, I'm shot in this arm. I'm shot in this arm. He like, um, sit on the curb and put both of your hands behind your back. I'm like, man, I'm shot in this arm. I can't put it behind my back. He like, put it behind your back. So I think I just like, mean this shit like that type shit. Then I sat right there. For a minute, then the ambulance pulled up. And when the ambulance got there, um, I remember the lady, it was a white lady. I wanted to see her, like, so I wonder, like, how she doing type shit. But she she was in the uh, back of the ambulance, so they put me on the stretcher and shit. They cut my clothes open, put me on the stretcher, so she put me in the back. And she was like, um, she was like, um, Let's hurry up and get him to the hospital before the sergeant get here and he bleed to death type shit. Cause I guess like when when you in critical condition or some shit, like um, 
Well, I don't even think I was in critical condition. I think I was just bleeding a lot. Right. I guess like they they objective is for the detective to hurry up and ask you questions just in case. Right. Type shit. So she was like, hurry up. So they put me in the ambulance and we just went to the hospital. How many times did you get hit? Six. And then. No vital organs though? No, no vital organs. So what do you think happened to you? He got friendly fire? My brother? Yeah, the one that was in the car with you. No, I think the dude in the back seat shot him in the head. Oh, okay. Like when it first happened. You're right. Cause he had his gun on him too. Right. But he never shot. Right. So that's why when you're saying Johnny shoot him, he couldn't because he had already got hit. Yeah. I think he got hit like off the rip. Rip. Type shit. Right. Yeah. So what happened to the guy that was in the back that ended up collapsing? Did he live? Mm -mm. Yeah, he lived. Okay. He was paralyzed. Right. I don't know about now. Well, right. that's what I heard. You know how you hear shit yeah, in the right. street, but right. you don't know. Like, right. Yeah. He lived, though, from what I remember. Right. What I know, yeah. The guy, did they ever find the guy that shot you that was outside the car? Yeah, they, 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 I don't know about it. I know they found two people, but I didn't know what they looked like. Right. So I, I couldn't tell, like, the police shit really it was dark type right shit. so i think they ended up they got charged and then it got thrown out mm -hmm. type shit you think about that do you think about that day what could have been what what could you have done different yeah hell yeah but i ain't even want to really ride with them that day because i was really just trying to chill it was right. my birthday right we had some shit like some drinking shit some looking and shit we was finna get drunk so I was really just going over there to kick it with them right. type shit. So yeah, I be thinking about that. But the the main thing I think about is like, like I heard his grandma on the phone telling him like, I'm ready. Cause he pick her up from work every day. Right. And I just used to think like, damn, I wish he would have just went and got his grandma instead type shit. Cause he wouldn't got his grandma. You wouldn't have been in the car. You wouldn't have been there. He wouldn't have been there. And that day would have never happened. Facts. Yeah. Oh, God. You've seen a lot of tragedy. Your uncle ended up getting killed. You... That wasn't my real uncle, though. Right. But remember I told you, like, how we, like, made family Like a family. Over here. Mm hmm Yeah, he got killed when I was in third grade. I remember um, I was, I was, I think I was asleep. But I was so bad, I probably was up. But I remember it was a school night. And mm -hmm. I remember, um. Just hearing like, boom, 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 boom. And I remember jumping up. And I remember jumping up and looking at my window. And then my mama came in the room and just started hugging me type shit. Started holding me. But I was so young. I think I knew it was gunshots, but some was telling me it was firecracker. Right. So I go back to sleep. And I remember um, getting up the next, like a couple of hours later, like that was probably like two in the morning. Mm -hmm. I had to get up probably like Sam for school. Right. And I remember like um, my mama was ironing my outfit for school and shit. And the news was on. And they was like, um, I think it was five of them that got killed that night. Mm -hmm. It was like four, four or five. It might have been six. It was like the dudes came. They killed Big Boy, which was like my uncle. Mm -hmm. They killed um, Swiss Shot and like another one of their partners and like two maintenance men. And then I remember like um, my mama telling me, or, or it, it was either my mama or my stepdad, it was like, yeah, they killed big boy, woo type shit. But then when I got older, you know how you replay shit back mm -hmm. in your head? I was like, he robbed the wrong person. Cause I remember like all oh, that week, he had went and bought one of them new Tahoes, the Z72 trucks. What? The Z71? Yeah, the, the, the two though. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, that's the high end. Yeah, he had bought one of them. He had, um, I remember walking down there because like when I was young, they used to like give me like little dollars and shit. And I used to like rap, mm -hmm. like do little, like, little like freestyle. three bars or right. some shit. And they'll give me some dollars. So I remember one time, like that week I went down there and they was like all outside by the Z71. Like they was on the truck, mm -hmm. chilling on the truck, smoking and shit. I remember I seen like a big ass bag of weed, probably like five pounds or some shit. Wow. Just bags of weed 
on the like hood of the mm-hmm. car. And I remember um one of them, one of them, his name was Kevin. He used to have a bot Chevy on 23s with mm-hmm. the Jordan logo on. Mm-hmm. I remember him like, man, put that shit up, bro. What the hell wrong with y'all? Put that shit up. But I remember like, I ain't never seen them have that much weed. I right. seen them smoke weed a million times. They ain't never had that much weed. So I feel like that's what happened, but I don't know. Right. But I feel like that's what happened though. Hit somebody's stash out, huh? Yeah, the wrong nigga and they right. came back. Cause they chased him. They, he was in like, it was some more apartments connected to right. apartments and it was a cut. He got down, he got shot in the next apartments. So he was the, running, in, he saw him coming. In the head once, mm-hmm. but he still was alive. And he ran all the way from them apartments, ran like through the cut. Cause the cut is like right next to my building. Mm-hmm. He came through the cut and ran all the way down to, to like, to the end. Like, well, um, our street, it was a dead end on our street. And he ran all the way to like, well, um, my cousin Rakim stayed there, mm-hmm. and he ended up dying, like collapsing on their front step type shit. Right. Okay. But your twenty first birthday, that wasn't the first time you had gotten shot, was it? Was that the first time you got shot? No, that was the second time. The first time was like on some like bullshit though. It was just like a graze for real. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like no, just you know what I'm saying. Like I ain't even go to the hospital. Right. Yeah. Was it a, was accident or was someone intentionally trying to? It was, I think it was an accident. Okay. Yeah. 21st birthday. You lose your partner. You almost lose your life. You watch. You've gotten grades before. Your your uncle, who's not your biological uncle, but he was raised up with you, so he, he was considered him an uncle. At what point in time, Savage, do you say, enough of this? Mm-hmm. I think like yeah, after I got shot. Cause you got a kid, you got to think of now. You got yeah, you got another sure. life to be responsible for. Yeah, it ain't just yeah. you now. For sure. I remember thinking about that too. Like while I was sitting there, like, I was like, I remember I just kept mumbling like I can't go out like this, can't go out like this, can't go out like this type shit. And I was just thinking about my little boy type shit. Did you ever lose consciousness? Mm-mm. Not from what I remember. Right. Mm-mm. You've uh, you've lost siblings. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, I think it's your your father had a son that ended up getting stabbed to death, correct? Yeah, in London, in my grandma's neighborhood. Mm-hmm. That's why I just shot my last video. At. Yeah. How does one that have experienced death so much? How does one cope with it? It's one thing to know someone's gonna die of old age. We got grandparents or we have someone over there with a terminal illness. Okay, that's one thing. But to see someone lose their life so young, to see a, a parent bury a child when no one, no parent should have to bury a child. It's supposed to be the other way, the child bury the parent. How does one begin to cope or wrap their minds around death in that capacity? I don't know. I don't know how I do it. Cause I didn't had times like why I cry sometimes type shit when I'm by myself and shit, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I think you just gotta be built for this shit. Like you gotta just be built for it. Like you learn how to like, just like move forward in life and just accept certain shit. But it's mm-hmm. like, it still hurt though, but right. I, don't, I don't know like what it, I don't know how I cope with it, honestly. I read where you said after your brother's death, I took my anger out on you. I wish I could take that ish back. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like, like growing up, like I ain't really, we ain't really talk like that neither. Cause I used to be like kind of jealous of like the relationship that him and my daddy had. Mm-hmm. I used to feel like my little brother was the son he wanted. And I was, I was the son that he didn't want type shit. Mm. So like when me and my, my, Daddy relationship faded, it's like me and my relationship with like that whole side of the family faded type shit. But you, like right before he died, we had just started back talking. Okay. So it was like me saying that was like, damn, I regretted all the other, the, all the years that we wasn't talking because I felt like, 
you was like spoiled by my like you know what I'm saying? Right. Like you was his favorite type shit. Like mm -hmm. he ain't really fuck with me. He right. he wasn't there for me how he was there for you type shit. Right. Like I remember one time, like um, my daddy had came to visit. This is the only time he ever came to visit. And he had to use like my mama told him like, no, my my mama baby, my stepdaddy told my mama like, they ain't gotta spend no money on no hotel while they here. They can come stay with us, type shit. Yeah. Oh, Y'all barely had enough room for you guys. But shit, West Indians just like that. Yeah, man. right. Okay. We'll cram in this bitch. Like, <laughs> oh God, we gonna cram in this motherfucker. So, so they came and stayed with us and shit. And he had brought my little brother with him. <coughs> And I remember one day, goddamn, he had then took um, the van. He had took us to City Trends and shit. And goddamn, he only bought my little brother shit. He ain't buy me shit though, type shit. And then I remember, um, I think my mama and my stepdaddy got to arguing about that because he took too long with the car. Right. And my stepdaddy had to go to work. Mm -hmm. type shit so I remember just being like I remember like being in the store and like I was like picking out shit and he wasn't grabbing my shit that I was picking out but he was grabbing my little brother shit type shit and I remember like like being jealous like being hurt by that type shit right so goddamn I ain't never say shit though like that like when because I was too young so it was kind of like a you know, when you young and you feel some type of way about right. something, but you can't say nothing. So right. it's just like, you just eat it. Right. So I remember we got home. I remember them arguing and shit. And then I remember my stepdaddy telling my daddy, like, this ain't got nothing to do with you, bro. You good. Like, like, um, don't worry about nothing. You didn't do nothing wrong. She was supposed to tell y'all what time I had to go to work type shit. Right. And goddamn, I remember my daddy, um, we, we go home, we, we at home now. Well, we walk in the house, cause I think my stepdaddy told my daddy that while we was like in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So we walk in the apartment, we go in the house. I remember my daddy and my mama talking and shit. And then I remember my daddy called me in the room and he was like, um, he was like, I ain't gonna lie, um, um, I'm homesick type shit. He was like, I think I'ma leave early. What? Type shit. And I remember being like, I remember being like, hurt by that too, type shit. And then he left, type shit. And I, I remember that's when I first started like being like, man, fuck this nigga. Like, that's my, that was my first feeling of like, and my brother. Right. That's when I first started being jealous of my brother. Cause I was like, eh, you ain't seen me in years. You done brought my brother out here and bought him all type shit. You ain't bought me nothing. Right. Type shit. So I think that's where that like jealousy like came from. Type shit. But I wish I never did that. Cause with you're my, a child. With my brother. But I think I couldn't control. No, you're how. a child. That's like anything. I mean, if you got two kids and you buy one constantly, the other child will become resentful of the child that you buy everything for. And the child that you don't get anything, he'll resent both the child and the parent. Yeah. So it's it's a natural reaction, Savage. I mean, that, that was not something that you could consciously like. You know what? It's okay. You know, blah. blah. That's not how. That's not how a child minds function. Yeah. But it explains why you have the resentment towards your father, and you ended up growing, even though it wasn't your brother's fault. But still, he was getting gifts and things that you weren't, yeah. and so you resented him for getting things that you couldn't get, and you resented the father for giving it to him. Mm -hmm. And you, the opportunity then that, you know, you hear people say all the time, Savage, that, you know, make sure you tell someone that you love them. You don't know when it's going to be the last time or you might not get an opportunity. And here we, you see, you sit back and like, man, yeah, oh God. the feelings that I had towards him, what I would give to tell him I love you and I, I appreciate you and bro. Oh God. Yeah. 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 The type of father that you are. I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you want to be everything that your father wasn't Facts. to your son, that Facts. your father wasn't to you. Facts. Yeah. 
but I kind of understand like with my daddy, like I don't <coughs> like I had forgave him for all that shit when I was a child. It right. Was more so like the reason why we not talking now is because like shit that he did like as an adult that mm -hmm. just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Right. But like I kind of understand like a child in a whole nother country. Mm -hmm. like, you ain't rich. Right. But it was just like look, time doesn't cost anything though. Right. But it was like other little things. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, but now like with my kids, I be feeling like I don't be doing all the way my job because of my job. Right. Type shit. Mm -hmm. So I be trying to like balance that out. Like trying to like, it's like you, you, you work to re receive, to gain all this success and all the good shit. But it's like, I feel like the best parents, in my opinion, is parents that don't got it all. I feel like broke parents are, are better than rich parents, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because when you broke, you got way more time type shit. Right. So you there for like a lot of the shit. Like, yeah, gifts and shit matter, but they don't matter at the same time. Sometimes all the kid needs is time. Facts. Your time. Facts. Something that a gift can't replace. Facts. We see uh, Yo Gotti lost his brother. Yeah, was coming from, was at a funeral, and ended up losing. Ended up son, uh, his brother ended up losing his life. Savage, how do we how do we stop that cycle? Because I heard Rick Ross call and say, "Bro, let's put the guns down. Let's put the masks down. Let's let's come together. Yeah, let's build this. Let's build these communities. Let's get this paper together. Let's stop this senseless violence. How?" I don't think that shit ever would stop. It's just my opinion. Like, people been killing forever. Mm -hmm. That shit just life. But what are, we, what are they actually killing for? Nothing. But you can't, there's nothing that you can kill somebody for that validates right. killing. You're fighting over territory that doesn't belong to you. That block doesn't belong to you. That belongs to the man. Yeah. But I don't feel like people really fight over blocks no more. Like, I think it'd be like shit that people do to each other. Right. Because it, it, it's like you can look at it from two points of view. Because okay. when I was younger, I used to look at it from my point of view. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm older, it's like I look at it from like an older point of view. Right. But when I was younger, it was like, if somebody killed your brother, mm -hmm. like, what? What can stop you from wanting to kill their brother? You seeking revenge. Like, what can stop you from wanting to do that? You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, then I'd be like, damn, what give like people the right to say when you can kill? Because it's people who, damn, they got a license to kill. Who mm -hmm. can go, they can go kill somebody legally. What what's the difference? Like, what makes their reason more valid than this young boy who just lost his brother? Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't feel like killing will ever stop probably the amount and the how it's happening and shit mm -hmm. can slow down right but i feel like as long as you got life you got killing when did you decide that rap was going to be your way out and you was going to put that behind you how old were you when you said you know what i can do this i mean i think 50 50 was a guy that, that ended, was in the game, ended up getting shot nine times, t turned his life around. Um, I don't know if 50 is a role model of yours. I think I read somewhere where you said 3-6 Mafia. Yeah, I liked the day music growing up, but mm -hmm. I ain't really know much about 3-6 Mafia. Like, I knew about Project Pat, like, his story. Mm -hmm. I ain't really know about 3-6 Mafia, like, as a whole story. Right. 50 Cent was a thousand percent, like, I looked it up to him growing up, too. For right. sure, like... Cause he told his story more than like a lot of other artists. Mm -hmm. He had a movie and all this type of shit. So right. I knew his story a little more. Like I was inspired by his story and shit. So when did you decide to say, I'm gonna give this rap thing a try? Like after I got shot? Yeah. That's when I really just started like trying to like rap for real. Right. Like I had made songs playing around and shit with right. friends, but 
that's when I started like really like putting my money into it and shit like that. Right. Okay, you meet Metro Boomin. Yeah. And so that was so how did you meet him and how did you guys become such good friends? I met Metro Boomin through Key. It's a Atlanta rapper named Key. Mm -hmm. And I met Key through Man Man. Mm -hmm. He a rapper from Atlanta too. Right. And Key used to bring me around Sunny Digital. Nobody has real names, huh? Everybody got Man Man and Key yeah, and yeah. Slim, Skinny, uh, oh God. Pope. <laughs> Oh God, Shay Shay. <laughs> true, touche, touche. <laughs> right. <coughs> Goddamn. Um, they used Key used to bring me around Sunny, and Sunny was the man. Okay. And then everybody used to be at Sunny House. Right. And then that's how I met Metro. So you met you up. He gave you. So did he know? Did he know you rapped at the time? I don't think so. He ain't know me. Right. But I just walked up on him like, man, I'm savage, bro. I need some beats. I'm finna start rapping. And he fucked around and sent me a couple beats. And I had did like a couple songs on him and he fucked with him. And then we just grew a relationship. And it, it took off from there. Yeah. Did did you think or did you know? But really, Sonny, Sonny, my, my songs with Sonny blew up before my songs with Metro. Okay. Type shit. Okay. So it was really me and Sonny was locked in like, Metro was giving me beats too, but I was doing like projects with Sonny and shit. Sonny was like showing me how to record, okay. like let me use his house to record and all type of shit. And then me and Metro grew our relationship while all that was going on type mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. Did you think you could become this? Mm -mm. Cause I remember I used to like, when I had caught my little first little song, right. I remember I used to be sitting at Sonny house like, man, when the hell are you supposed to start getting show money, bro? Type shit. Right. And he used to be like, bro, don't worry, bro. It's going to come, bro. Trust me, bro. Like, it's going to come. Type shit. I ain't think it will be like this. Nah, hell no. Nah. Because back then it was like, people was blowing up, but I don't know if people was blowing up that big. Right. I feel like all the people who this big right now, like we all got there around the same time mm -hmm. type shit. Right. Like we ain't had nobody be like, what Future back then who was just right. big like that. Future says, if young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I mean, but you look at your guy, I mean, what is it about Atlanta? You, Future, Tip, Luda, I mean, Eastside, if you if you in the rap game, I think little baby. Yeah. I think Atlanta's just like a player city, like, it's just player, like, we just, I don't know, we just know how to talk, we know how to walk, dress, talk to women, set trends, it's just, right. it's something in the air, I don't know. I had T.I. on the podcast, T.I. said, you asking for a million dollars, and he said no, because he said that I would have to take more from you. Yeah. He was still trying to sign me though. T.I. is just cheap as hell. <laughs> he gonna try to. <laughs> but I did. He he sent me an offer. Yeah. And I my counter offer was I want a million. Right. And he was like, shit, I'm gonna have to take so much from you in return. Right. That it ain't even worth. It ain't even gonna be worth the million in the future type shit. So he actually saved you from yourself. Facts. Yeah, I look up to T.I. because T.I. one of them niggas. He rich as a motherfucker, but he tight as hell, boy. <laughs> That's how he keep that money, though. Right. He's smart with his money. You had a platinum album before you signed your first deal. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're in, you, you're in a very favorable situation because you got, you. I mean, it's not necessarily you got to do a bad deal because you already got a platinum album. It's not like a situation you're looking to get signed so you can release an album. You already got the album. Was it platinum or, or was it gold? Gold. Gold. You had platinum I had platinum, platinum singles. singles. Yeah, but I had a gold album. You're right. Yeah. But you straight. Yeah, for sure. So it kept, so that kept you out of a bad deal. Yeah. Cause I was like, it was like all type of street niggas I was supposed to sign to who right. had like little labels and shit. Right. But some just used to tell me like, man, hell no, nah, I don't take no thirty thousand, don't take no fifty thousand. Right. Like you worth more than that. Right. You end up shit. doing a seventy thirty split, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
with Epic. Right. Yeah, that was my first deal. It was like 70, 30, but like they had like a 10% distribution fee or some shit. Right. Yeah. So what, what's your take on streaming? I hear Snoop Dogg say, man, look here, man, them streaming, you stream a billion and man, you ain't really making no money. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on streaming? Um, I think it all depends on how your deal structure, because it's some money in streaming. It's much it's money just, streaming? It's just about like how your deal structure and how much you stream type shit. Well, it seemed to me it to gotta be, be some money in it because my label be giving me some money. Okay, I was, I was about to say, because the way you talking, you talking like you got a structured deal that you be getting. They got to be making money because right. they giving me money. Right. So it's some money in that shit, some real money in it. Let me ask you about your catalog. Future sold his catalog. I think he sold it 65, 75 million. Is that something you'd be interested in at some point? Yeah, probably later on down the line for sure. Yeah. I only got a couple albums right now, though. Right. But. You gonna stop it, it on up, get it? It depends how, how much my hustle, how I apply my hustle. Right. Cause shit, I might fuck around and invest in something and become a billionaire and, and be able to pass my catalog down to my kids. Might right. not even have to sell my catalog. Right. I'm looking at the, the XL uh, freshman class. Lil Easy Vert, Yachty, Kodak, Denzel, Curry, J. Herbo, David East, Lil Dick, Anderson Pack, Designer, and you. Boy, y'all hit a lick that year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, y'all gonna leave. Yeah, for sure. It was some stars on that cover. Do you uh do you do you ever sit back and like, man, considering what you, your story of how coming to to Atlanta from London or the East Side, your upbringing, there's a lot of things that could have happened that this didn't happen. Do you ever sit back and like, damn, man, this shit, I'm new, uh, Savage, all right? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. But I'd be like, I still got to keep going, though. You still trying to grind? Yeah. But I do be, like, appreciative, though. I do sit back and just daydream sometimes. Like, damn, this shit could have went this way or this way type shit. Right. Sure. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticket app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show you the total up front so you know exactly what you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in two seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code SHAYSHAY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an app, redeem the code SHAYSHAY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Your new project, American Dream, is projected to have a, your number one album. Um, first album in six years. How much have you grown since your first album? I think I, my sound just changed, like my beat selection, like just talking about deeper things and just like, I feel like I'm just growing up. Like I'm a grown up now. Right. Shit. I was like a young nigga when I first came out. I, I was just saying anything type shit. Right. Samples on the album. How difficult was it, how difficult was it to clear the samples for some of the music that you used? Um, Jan do that, my a and she, mm -hmm. she be handling it. She be on, on top of all that shit, so. She ain't really come back to me like nothing was too hard to right. clear this time, but it do get hard sometimes. It gets hard because they want to charge more than what you think it's worth, or they just don't want you to sample it? Some people just don't want you to sample that shit. Right. Like, um, one of my songs, like, they cleared it for the album, but then when it was time for me to do, like, commercials or like TV performances, they wouldn't clear it. So it was like, damn, I should've just never cleared it for the album in the first place. Cause right. now this song big and- And you can't sing it. I can't really do nothing. Do it, right. Everything that I want to do with it. So why, so why would they let you do it for the album but not let you do it commercially? I don't know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> do you ever look and see like, okay, American Dream's supposed to drop. And somebody else like, you know what? Like three other artists might be dropping that week. Would you ever move yours up or push yours back? Or you like, hey, may the best man win? 
It depends on who dropping. <laughs> I'm going to keep it all the way real. If it's somebody too big, I'm going to get up out their way. Right. But I'm going to normally know that before I even right. drop. Like, I'm going to know, like, you know, all the labels have, like, a calendar of what be coming out for the most part. Right. But, yeah, I, I get up out somebody's way. But people get up out my way, too, though. Right. They should. Yeah. I'm looking at uh, this. Are you the best rapper in that 2016 class? I feel like I am. Right. Yeah. But I feel like everybody in that class should feel like they is too. Right. But hell yeah, I feel like I am for sure. Dark Days, song of the album. You would say your gun won't love you back and the block won't hug you back. That song? Yeah. I really was like in the booth, like talking like to like a younger me. A, okay. Uh, a young man in that same situation type shit. Like I was just like telling them like, yeah, this shit might look cool, but in reality, like this is the truth. Like this is what it really is right here. Like this is the real mm -hmm. type shit. And I was just like talking to him in that way. Like, yeah, you you could say you love that block, but it, it don't love you. It ain't gonna hug you back. Right. You can stay, like hug the block. That's like posting on the block all night. It ain't gonna hug you back. You can love your gun, but your gun ain't never gonna love you back. Right. You're gonna, turn you, you gonna lose you. your friends. After your candlelight, they ain't, you, ain't nobody gonna come check on your mama like that. They ain't gonna give her nothing. Wow. Like, you feel me? Like, that's just how shit go for real. You told kids to stay in school, talked about seeing friends take their last breath, talked about crying at night and mama's crying, talked about kids growing up without fathers, said even thought you even thought about suicide. Uh, tell the story that don't want people to live. So what is it about that lifestyle that people find so, not people, but young men, especially a lot of young men of color, find so fascinating? When you young, you damn near get rewarded for dumb shit. Right. Like when you young. But it ain't like a real reward, but mm -hmm. it's like you get more attention. Mm -hmm. I say that like, like when we be growing up, like we don't be getting a lot of attention type shit. Like right. man, our daddy ain't, Around. you know, mama always mm -hmm. busy type shit. So like when you do bad shit, remember I told you like you get a counselor. Right. That was like some cool in school. Like if you had a counselor, like other kids looked at you like, like you were something type right. shit. So it's like, it just build up and build up and build up type shit. And you just used to getting rewarded for dumb shit or not dumb shit, but like bad shit right. that it just carry on. And then you just, before you know it, you a grown man and you just stuck in this shit type shit. But you were one of the ones that made it. You got an opportunity to be a grown man, got an opportunity to look back and say, look, made some mistakes. Don't learn, don't do make the mistakes that I made. Yeah. You wanted a few. Yeah. Bless. Very. I know a lot of people that didn't. Um, on this album, Young Thug, Young Thug, uh, Thug recorded, uh, pre-recorded. Do you still talk to Thug? Um, yeah. Not like that, though. But right. We, we didn't talk. The 21 American Dream. You got a story, uh, uh, a movie coming out. Nah, that was a parody. A parody? Oh, okay. Do you think your story, you think you, your story is good enough to be a movie or a documentary? You got a very interesting story, Savvy. Do you think? You think so? I do. Because it's the American dream. I mean, think about how many people, you hear them about this all the time, people migrating to America and you're an American success story. Not a whole lot of money, very tough upbringing, single parent. I mean, you had love and you could have gone down this path and you went down this path for a period of time. But somehow you come back down the straight and narrow and here we are. American love success stories. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it could be one day. They'll hate on it now, though. Why they go hate on it? Because they're going to be like, what the fuck? 21 Savage deserve a story for a movie by him right. for what he did. Right. You know how they do. You, you know what they hate on? Your relationship with Drake. Why people got why people got beef with Drake? What Drake do to anybody? I don't know. <laughs> so, because you know you're going to get blowback. If you cool with Drake, they hate on him, they're going to hate on you, too. Yeah, I don't know. I fought with Drake, though. Drake, my boy. 
Yeah, you sure? I mean, what's not the, what's not to like about the man? I mean, hell, everything he touched turned to yeah. platinum. Damn gold platinum. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Do you think people are envious of your relationship? Because obviously he, it's not like he, I don't, I wouldn't say that he doesn't mess with a whole lot of people, but he seems to have a very, you and he seem to have a very special relationship. And sometimes people get envious of that. They want what you have. What you feel like a man is if he's jealous of how cool two other men are. What do you what, what you think? What you think that is? What you would look at like that? Like if, if somebody said, I don't like how Stephen A fuck with Shannon Sharp. <laughs> like how that how that'll make you feel. <coughs> what you would look at that like? That's some hating ass, you know what? <laughs> right. Because it is, but what I, what you have to understand, and I'm learning this, Savage, is that as you rise, the applause is going to come, but so is the hate and the criticism. So if you're not willing to accept the applause and the adulation that comes along with the rise, you might as well get off because the hate and the criticism coming. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a part of it. And you just have to accept that. And and that can't, the, 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 the hate and the criticism, it can't drown out the applause and the adulation. Right. What adulation mean? <laughs> applause, the praise, the, the Grammys, the man, Savage, you hear Savage album? Man, F Savage, man, I don't fuck F with that dude like that, man. He ain't like that. Yeah. You know that's, you know that's coming. Yeah. But see, everybody, everybody, see, as long as you like here and everybody's here with you, we cool, Savage. But now, now, now hold on now. Don't you go here. Because <laughs> if I can't go here with you, I'm going to start hating on you. Yeah. Now, if you get here, now I got to say some stuff that might not even be true. Right. Because I don't want people to like you more than they like me. I ain't never been like that, though. I know you're not, but no, there are a lot of people that are. Yeah. I wonder why, though. Like, what make you be like that? Like, I always look at it like shit. That's just, just like me hanging on Drake. Yeah. I'm trying to get there. Right. I look at it like inspiration, like shit, I'm working. That's, see, that's how I look at it. I look at it, anybody that's done something, well, it's been done once, hell, it can be done again. Right. So if Drake there, hell, why can't I get there? Right. See, that's how I looked at it when I saw Stephen A and I see guys that Charles Barkley and things like that. I was like, I'm not hating on them. I was like, I can do that. Let me see, let me get on my grind. Yeah. But that's not how we are. We're not, we're not wired like that. Right. And it's sad, the touring aspect. What what do you what do you like what do you like most about touring, and touring with Drake? The money. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of it come with Drake, huh? That shit just come period. When right. You reach a certain level, cause shit, Drake ain't finna pay you nothing that you ain't worth. Right. He ain't like he just paying you cause you his friend. Hell nah. They paying you your fee. Man, it made me get thinking I should have started rapping instead of playing Might football. Well. Might as well. Then I got you. Well, what the hell? If, what a 55 year old gonna rap about? Shit, rap about goddamn everything. <laughs> everything you're going through. It's some 55 year olds that goddamn can relate. It's a lot. Google how many 55 year old men it is in the world. That's a bunch of them. All right, then. Nah, you ain't finna get me out there, have me out there. Jump looking out there, crazy. make a song, and get some screaming money, and then tell me if screaming pay or not. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like touring outside the country? It's different. Cause they they got it's like they love they love hard. They might not even speak English, but they can sing every word that you be singing. Yeah. That shit crazy. I ain't never got love like that before. Really? Well, I have, I have. But I think it's just different because they don't see you as often. So right. they appreciate you more. Right. Type shit. Yeah. So you love, so you love going, you love, I mean, it's not like you, you don't love touring the States, but you love going out of the country because they give you love, like. But I think it might be different for me because remember I couldn't travel for so long. Like my first time ever performing out the country was a couple months ago. Right. So because you couldn't leave because of the situation. Right. right. So I think it was like anticipated for me a lot. Right. But shit, every so showed out. They were showing love like a motherfucker, like screaming every song, like songs that I wasn't even expecting them to know. They know every word. Every word. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Let me ask you this. Would you ever experiment with your sound like Drake did? Um, yeah, why not? Once I get to Drake level, <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to be big as hell to experiment. Yeah. Because you could experiment 
and that shit in your career. Right. But so you got to have like the leverage to do that. Right. Type shit. But right now you love you love the savage sound right now. That's working right now. It's booming. You sold out. Your album number one. You go, you go platinum. I'm just slowly like evolving like type shit like piece by piece like I ain't finna just jump out the window and just make no whole different shit right but I give you like little bits and pieces of it like, right as I go type shit you like R&B would you ever do an R&B album with me singing yeah <laughs> hell nah man I had to go get a a, a vocal coach okay I love R&B though right. I listen to that shit more than anything I don't even listen to rap like that okay you you like R&B give me a Mount Rushmore R&B artist if you you got you got give me your top five R and B artists. Can they just artists or a group? Can it be either or? It can be either. Or. It's your list. All right. Mount Rushmore ain't in order neither. No, 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 no. Now Mount Rushmore is only four, but I'm a, I'm gonna make it easier. I'm gonna let All you right. get five. I'm gonna let you get five. All right. Usher. Okay. Um. I love SWV. Okay. Beyonce. Okay. The boy who in jail. R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, five tough man. Number five tough, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I love Monica. Monica. Okay. But then, like, you got Mary J. Blige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got goddamn, cause the Isley Brothers got some shit. For sure. It's so many other ones, mm -hmm. but. Them probably who I listen to the most. Right. What your Mount Rushmore be? R and B. Well, Usher, that definitely got to be on there. Usher. For me, I would say Usher, Mary J. Uh, man. James Brown. <laughs> I would probably know. That's so Marvin Gaye. James Brown soul, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't put him in R and B. Who? James Brown. No, I wouldn't either. No, probably Marvin Gaye. I guess Luther. For me, I love Luther, but you can't go wrong with Kenny Lattimore either. I don't know Kenny Lattimore. Yeah, he a little bit for your time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, but you know, but you know Luther, right? Yeah, yeah. Luther Vandross. Yeah, right? yeah. For sure. So, would you like? Let's just say you want to do an R&B album. Who, who, the, and you can't pick Beyonce. Why I can't pick Beyonce? Nah, hell no, nah, because I know you gonna, because you go, I know you gonna pick Beyonce. You can't pick Beyonce. Who you who jumping on the track with you? Just one person. Yeah. For the whole album. You have nah. You know what? I'm gonna let you do feature. You can have you can have as many as you want. Usher. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you have. I'll let you have Beyonce. Beyonce. Usher gonna do a track. Beyonce gonna do a track. Beyonce gonna do another track. <laughs> That's two. I'm gonna just get That's two, two right. from Beyonce. Um, Summer Walker. Okay. That girl. Um, she hard as a motherfucker. Coco Jones. Okay. Um, her. Okay, I like her. I'm gonna go get Avant wherever he at. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> We're gonna go get Avant. We're gonna get the boy Joe. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna see what Joe at. Well, you might better put, if you go get, you, what about KC and JoJo? You go put them on your R&B? They, they be singing still? They still say. Yeah, KC and JoJo. I'm going to go get Jagged Edge. Man, you go away. Oh, man. I'm going to bring them back together. I'm going to go get SWV. Yeah, okay. I got to come back out. Um, I love um Cut Close. If they still somewhere singing, I get Cut Close. I get Samo 2 to come back. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm gonna have all type of shit on my shit. Right. I probably make the hardest collaboration R&B right. album of all time if I could just get all them artists. Right. Oh God. Yeah, it's gonna cost you a lot though. Shit, it's all right. We gonna scream. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel to help J Cole win this with Grammy? I think we helped each other. I don't think I just helped him. I think we helped each other. It felt good. Shit, that was my first Grammy too. Right. It ain't like I just had 10 Grammys and I just gave him a Grammy. Right. We won that motherfucker at the same time. Right. I wouldn't have got it without him. Right. 
so so what was that what was that feeling like you're sitting in there you okay you get nominated obviously it's a huge accomplishment just to get nominated everybody say oh you know i don't need care if i win as long as i'm nominated bull jive you nominated you want to win okay so you sitting there and the grammy four goes to and they call j cole in 21 savage what goes through your mind i was sad that day because that was the day kobe died Oh, right. So I was kind of sad that day. And then, like, they, my award wasn't announced in the Grammys. Right. I knew I won it before we got there. Oh, it was that's like, anticlimactic. It was like one of them, like, pre-announced. Yeah. Yeah. You want to, you want to, hey, I want to, hey, I want to hear my. want to get up and yeah, walk up Yeah, yeah, you like, like walk on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, God. But, yeah. yeah, that was the day Kobe died. So oh, it was kind of, like, bittersweet. So would you do a, co a collab with J. Cole? Yeah, for sure. It seems like you like, look, you're one of these, you one of these artists that, hey, you collab, offset, J. Cole, Drake. You don't seem to have no beef with none of the artists. Mm -mm. Cause I feel like, I feel like life is bigger than like that type shit. I feel like we are blessed to be in these predicaments and positions and right. shit. Because I feel like we'll be doing the people an injustice by not giving them that right. type shit. Like back in the day, you don't remember like everybody used to be in everybody video. It was more like unity, like yeah. because we was all coming from. We we um, we spoiled now. Right, artists today is spoiled because of how far music has went. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was like it was harder to get on. Right, so they was more appreciative. By the time they got, they start getting they. Mm -hmm shit together you know what i'm saying right. so they all stuck together a little more yeah we had that that's why i feel like beefs was so big back then right because it was like more rare now like everybody beef got everybody, everybody beefing so type shit but are they really beefing or they trying to they trying to get some publicity it'd be half and half okay yeah i'm gonna put you on i got a tough one for you right now give me your top five atlanta rappers without me without you i'm gonna go future okay T.I. Okay. Gucci. Outcast. And Young Thug. Okay. I'm sorry, Luda. Jeezy. Y'all made my top five, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Migos, Thug, Yachty, out. Yeah. Baby, I'm sorry. See, you can't do no Atlanta top five. You can. You got to do Atlanta top twenty. <laughs> no, no. We got too many greats. Nah, cause I have to let you put everybody up in there. <laughs> so when they see this, like, hey, hey. I like my five. Them niggas ain't gonna put me in their top five anyway. So, <laughs> shit, <give> <laughs> they might. Hell no. Nah. They gonna say current, current or all time. So what 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 type of influence did Gucci have on you? You say you saw Gucci at Miss Wieners. Very, very early on. I'm going to keep it real. Like, growing up on the east side, bro, Gucci made me hate Young Jeezy as a child. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because the beat like, they had go with the head. Yeah, like, I used to really be like, man, fuck Jeezy. Right. I'm from the east side, nigga. Gucci <laughs> type shit. Oh, God, Gucci had a big impact. Like, right. Gucci was the one, like, and he was like, he put that shit on the map, like, let it be known, like, right. the east side type shit. Are you big into gifts? Do you buy uh, other, uh, other? I saw Drake uh, bought Thug or Ferrari. Are you big into buying other artists' gifts that jump on your album and, and, and it blow it up? Um, yeah, we be buying. I done bought Drake some shit. He done bought me some shit. I done bought Thug shit. He bought me shit. Like people that I fuck with. Right. Like Metro. Right. I just don't do shit for the internet. Right. So like. You do stuff and don't nobody know about yeah, it. Yeah, but a nigga might have a chain on that I bought him. Right. But you would never know. Right. Because I ain't finna, like, be like, huh, huh, right. bruh, like, yeah. type shit. Were you old enough to remember Freak Nick? Yeah. Freak Nick was like that, wasn't it? I don't remember being there. I just remember traffic. Like, can't go nowhere. Nope. Type shit. It was real nice, though. But you got to come to my free. You been, you know, I be throwing Freak Nick, too. You three, what, what, hold on, what time? What, 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 what really going on? On my birthday. When, when is this? October. Ah, oh, man. Man. We had like, how many people was out there? Like 7,000 people? Yeah. All downtown at the underground. We had, we had Uncle Luke perform. What? 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember them days. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I told you, see? After you get 55, you just get on up out the way. You know, I had my time. In my early 20s, in my late 20s, early 30s, yeah. I had my time. I had my time with Freaknik. <laughs> you missed, you, it, it was real nice. Actually. For real? Real, oh, <laughs> man, let, let me stop. Let me stop. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say that. It was all right. It was all right. <laughs> nah. Uh, everybody be talking about, you know, teeth. What's going on, I me? Mean, you spend a lot, you put, spend good, I mean, now you, 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 you savage. You can be in front of the camera, you rapping, you gotta have your grill right. Yeah, for sure. How many bands you put in there? Like 85. See? <laughs> I had to go get them right. You get it right. Yeah. You, you're you supposed to, though. Yeah. Not the composite shit. No, nah, no. Nah, that's that. Yeah, nah, 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 I know. Yeah. You got that porcelain. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, too. <laughs> grills, no grills. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me, I want to I get to this. Dating publicly. Would you ever date publicly again? Mm. Yeah, probably. You would? Would you? No. Why? Because I believe if you date publicly, you have to break up publicly. And you have to deal with your issue publicly. Yeah. If you date privately, you can break up privately and deal with any issues you may have privately. Damn, I never thought about it. Like, you just taught me something. That's just me. I mean, to each his own. I mean, some people like that. I don't, I, my relationship is not for public consumption. Right. Because sometimes I think people start to try to live, try to, to play out their relationship for the public yeah. and do things. Oh, you see what they did? They on this vacation. Now, if I go on vacation, it's just me and you. I ain't trying to do anything for the grandma the net. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I don't all that, like when you go out to eat and you women got to take pictures, Ooh, let me take a picture. Of the food. Come on, man. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. But that's the each his own. Yeah. But you, but you could be, I mean, if your, your, your lady says, okay, you know, savage, I boy, hey. You might just change my mind. <laughs> oh, God. You might just change my mind because you, you got to break up publicly. But what if you never break up? You don't, have you ever been in a relationship that you felt like, I don't think we ever going to break up? Hell, all the relationship that you be in, you be thinking that at a time. <laughs> I don't think anybody get no relationship thinking like, oh man, this this is going to end tomorrow. <laughs> you think you think it's going to last forever? Oh god! But I just think the thing is, is that sometimes you know, that, man, that internet man. Yeah. Then people start then people start surmising what's going on. Or, oh, he ain't he don't love her like that. She don't love him. She for the street. He for the street. And it start to play. I mean, you you get inundated with that savage man. You hear that enough, and it just yeah. It'll take a toll on you. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, your tattoos. How old were you got your first tattoo? 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I had got my mama name, though. All right. So she couldn't. So you were cool with that. <laughs> so how old were you first got your face tat? Your first face tat, how old were you? 16. She didn't like that. 17. Did yeah, she didn't like it. 17. 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so what was it? The cross was nah, it? It was twenty one. Okay. And then that next year, um, my big brother Larry, mm -hmm. that was like Johnny best friend. Mm -hmm. He had got killed. Him and his mama got killed together. Wow. And I had got R. I. P. Larry because me and Larry went and got twenty one together. Right. So I had went and got R. I. P. Larry around it. That was my second face tattoo. Right. What does being a father mean to you? everything it's just like i feel like that's where your legacy count the most because mm -hmm. when you think of like all the legends you be like damn i wonder what they son doing what they kids look like like that's who carry on like that's everything. your name that's your lineage yeah i feel like it mean everything and you're trying to be everything that your father was to you yeah facts do you make a, is it just second nature or you try, or you make a conch or you like, yeah, my dad wouldn't do this, so I'm going to do that. My nah, dad. hell no, nah, I don't do that. It's just second it's nature. It's just second nature. I don't even think it's like, a, I don't even think of me and my daddy relationship when I think of like my kids. Really? It's just what, what come natural to me. Did you always want to be a parent? Did you always want to be a father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wanted to have kids. I feel like, what did you... What did you really do it for if you don't have no kids? Right. 
Like, what was all of this for? You just gonna die and then what? That's the end of you. Ain't nothing else to go on, like, type shit. Like how I look at, like, Bronny and shit. Mm -hmm. Or, like, Kenya Martin Jr. Mm -hmm. Or, like, Carmelo's son. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what it's about type right. shit. Like, oh, God. You, you want your, what if your son would say, Dad, you know I want to be a rapper, too? I'm going to try and find something else. But if that's his passion, <laughs> right? shit, we're going to do it the right way. Right. <laughs> when people say rap is declining, your answer is? Um, my show price is going up. <laughs> so it's already declining. So it, can't, it can't be declining. Shit, my shit going up. Right. I just did the most streams in the day for... for of my career, the biggest solo streams of my career. Wow. So it can't be declining. But I don't know, though. Right. What's 21 Savage's goal for 24? We early in 24. We early, we January. So okay. what, what can we expect? What's your goals for 24? I just want to, like, level up with everything that I'm doing. Like, better show. Um, I feel like everybody love the album mm -hmm. already. Like, um, spend more time with my kids and my, my people. Like, I want to go back to London more often mm -hmm. and shit. And just like... Now that you can travel, that's yeah, something that you want to do. Yeah, like traveling and just starting new ventures and shit and business and shit. Just growing up. Right. Doing grown stuff. 21 Savvy, ladies and gentlemen. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why All my life, I've been grinding all my life yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life Sacrifice, hustle pay the price Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why All my life, I've been grinding all my life